Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you see my slides? <coughs> Dr. Akram, Dr. Sohila, can you hear me? Yes, yes doctor, doctor, we can hear you. We can uh, hear you. Okay, Just okay. sometimes the camera doesn't work well. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> All right. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidina ashrafi lamba wa masyadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, thank you for coming. Oh, I didn't read the chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming to today's talk. Inshallah, I'm going to continue with. Actually, I'm going to recap. All right, I'm going to recap whatever that I have presented in the last two classes, two sessions. Because I think as this is the first, even though it is actually the third session, but it is the first uh, for, for the session to be conducted in collaboration with Muhammad Kamal Hassan Lebri and also Centris. So, inshallah, today I'm just going to recap uh, the discussion that we have uh, conducted. Uh, previously, okay. I'm sharing with you the I attend. Ah, Alhamdulillah. Brother Iskanda also have shared. Have shared the link. Okay. So please bear with me today. I'm a little bit. <coughs> under the weather so i will cough regularly i'm so sorry for that <coughs> okay yesterday i was fine but all of a sudden got this cough okay so basically the book is entitled voice of islamic moderation from the malay world and of course it is written by our late professor kamal hassan so the book, as I mentioned, for those of you perhaps who remember, uh, the book is actually a compilation of his articles, around 11 articles that he wrote as a response to the problem of uh, Islamophobia all right, that happened especially after the 9-11 period. So, uh, the publisher compile and then for the preface, it is written by Dr. Zamri Kade. Dr. Zamri Kade was our alumni. Currently, <coughs> he is uh, the foreign minister for our country. So, yeah, as, as claimed by him, he was also a student of Pro Kamal. All right. So this book, as I mentioned, for chapter one, is it is divided into three parts. All right. If, as you can see here, it is divided into three parts. Uh, part one. All right. <coughs> part one, promoting the common ground amongst religions and cultures. So under this part one, actually we have four chapters. Part two, if we manage to continue, it consists of another three chapters. Part three consists of another four chapters. So altogether, 11 chapters. But uh, our focus today will be on the first part. All right. And the title for chapter one <coughs> is The Expanding Spiritual Moral Rule of world religions in the new millennium. So as I mentioned many times, or our modus operandi, uh, I'm going to read all of these texts okay, come from uh, uh, the writings of the late professor. So whatever that I'm explaining to you actually comes from my own understanding. Meaning to say, it, I'm, I'm, I may be, I might be quite lacking in terms of uh, perhaps explaining the text from other field of studies. 
for example as my specialization is in political science and in particular political philosophy so perhaps yeah uh, all of you you have your own uh, specialization so you can always chip in all right uh, and share with us perhaps i'm quite lacking in terms of historical facts etc so the first subtopic today inshallah we're going to discuss <coughs> two subtopic subtopics all right number one turning towards the sacred so this is the first subtopic okay so in this subtopic the late prof he quoted a lot okay from the work of karen m strong all right uh, karen m strong is a well-known theologian who studied uh yeah who studies uh religion in particular islam but if, as far as i'm concerned she herself is not a muslim all right uh, but nonetheless prof kamal he quoted a lot of armstrong's work in order to show that actually religion is important all right especially during this 21st century all right so implicit in armstrong's work does god have a future <coughs> is that mankind needs god all right so she made a conclusion at the end of her work she said that yes in conclusion man needs god all right because human beings according to her are not only homo sapiens but also homo religious all right and therefore religion fulfills that need meaning to say we also need religion if not we are not complete religion will play a bigger role according to armstrong in 21st century as the world and mankind continue to face serious moral social environmental economic and political crisis all right it, it, oh, don't worry it is quite repetition i'm sorry as i mentioned i need to reiterate this again is recap this again because this is the first session we have with uh, centuries right and mkhl later inshallah in the next session i will continue with the next subtopic okay i think it is not uh, it is good for us to revise this again inshallah we will get uh, more understanding when we discuss it further so because of the emergence of the new world order <coughs> or rather the new world disorder all right uh, again for prof kamal as i mentioned before the current new world order is actually can be termed as new world disorder all right because of all of this all of these problems that that occurred and are going to occur in the future all right uh, so we need religion so what is new world disorder new world disorder actually consists of uh, the triumphs of capitalist globalization plus the ICT revolution. Meaning to say, yes, today many scholars, especially those who are against capitalism, most of them sometimes they have, they have uh, gave up, right? They said that capitalism is too big to fall, right? We cannot go against capitalism, all right? Because of the dominant, okay? it has become the dominant system or the hegemonic system of the world. All right, so this new world disorder actually consists of capitalism, okay, the global capitalist system plus, all right, ICT revolution. As a result, we face borderless world with a grim prospect for ecological disaster, <coughs> permissiveness, hedonism, aimlessness, alienation, and hideous violence. Right, when we look at literatures related to capitalism, for example, many people, okay, those who are against capitalism, they say that okay, capitalism only produces alienation, for example. All right, alienation meaning to say you become an alien. Okay, we become sidelined within the society because of this profit centered system. Okay, while great progress is being made in science, medicine, and technology okay so yes we do fit, we do have 
uh, progress in science, medicine, technology, ICT, but in terms of our morality, okay, we started to become backward, all right? Uh, so morality has been sidelined, so to speak. So modern scholars promote the belief that modernity and progress would make mankind less and less dependent upon religions or the belief in God. Okay, so meaning to say we do not have to believe in God as believing in God will only impede us in terms of progress, right? If at all religion is to survive in the world of modernity and scientific progress, it has to be marginalized. Okay, religion must be put into private sphere only. Okay, marginalized to the private realm only. We do not talk about our religion publicly. We do not do dakwah. All right, we don't care whatever that other people want to believe in. Right, because of this individual's liberty concept. Okay. So it is more or less just like the continuation. I think this is Prof. Kamal is also explaining about the continuation of the Enlightenment project, right? Or modernity project, wherein they, especially the Europeans and the Western world, they rejected. They rejected religion, right? But we will see what kind of religion that they rejected, actually. Okay. While autonomous human reason reign supreme in the public sector, meaning to say <coughs> our epistemology will be based on reason only, all right? Not revelation. Because as again, okay, again, as I mentioned, religion will simply impede us. All right. <coughs> I'm very sorry I cannot. I cannot stop my coughing. All right. uh, please bear with me. I'm very sorry. Perhaps it will uh, make you feel quite uncomfortable. Okay, so this was in fact the solution that modern European society, <coughs> after the period of enlightenment and the age of reason, chose to overcome the problems posed by the dominant Christian authority, all right? Uh, church dogmas and bloody inter-religious conflicts, all right? So simply, it was actually because they were against the Catholic Church, all right? Uh, all right, if you read history, for example, they blame the church for saying that actually the sun is circulating the earth. For a thousand of years, they were believing in that, all right? But after, after that, all of a sudden, Copernicus, Galileo, and uh, Bacon, uh, they came up with a theory that actually the Earth is circulating, okay, is the one that is circulating the sun. All right? Starting from that scientific revolution, the Europeans, they started to think, okay, for example, what else? Okay, the church, the Catholic church, okay, is wrong. All right? mm, perhaps also in in terms of the question of our social life, our political life, our moral life, okay, these are also wrong. Okay, actually the interpretation given by the Pope, okay, and the Catholic Church, all of this while, they were actually wrong. So they went against the Church, right? And in particular the Catholic Church. So they faced Protestant Reformation, right? Uh, they went against the so-called the Divine King of Catholicism. So the problem with this solution, <coughs> which became a characteristic of the worldview of secularism, meant that the colonized Muslim state should adopt it as their very own, since it has served its purpose in Europe and North America. So meaning to say what's wrong is actually according to Prof. Kamal, the Europeans in particular, they and North African people, they actually they misunderstood right religion they they think that we also the asian people the muslim right buddhist okay before i forget actually prof kamal is writing this book uh, in the framework of addressing everyone meaning to say he he does not right talking from the perspective of a muslim per se right meaning to say he was trying to be 
um, to be moderate, right? Uh, meaning to say, he also talks about Buddhism, as we will see later, right? Confucianism, right? Okay. So, yes, for them, yeah, the European and the North American people, for them, we, the Asian people, Oriental people, also need to follow that model. Meaning to say, yes, they managed to win against their their Catholic kings, right? So we also should do that. Okay, religion is only impeding the progress. So we also, as Muslim, should adopt that framework. Okay, so that's the part according to Prof Kamal where the Europeans they misunderstood. <coughs> this is of course part of the old agenda of Western imperialism. Okay, imperialism and a manifestation of the tendency of absolutizing Western ideas and values. Okay, again the problem of generalization, universalization. All right, and this. We know that, yes, many modern projects, theoretically, yes, they face that problem, right? Generalization, absolutism. They say that just follow liberal market economy. For example, liberalism, then you will have world peace. Okay? So we need to also believe in that. So the rationalism and skepticism, according to them, right? The rationalism and skepticism of the age of enlightenment of 70th and 80th century Europe part of the way for the dethronement of European religion and consequently scientism replaced the belief in God. So they replaced God with science. Okay. So therefore many of modern thinkers such as Marx, Nietzsche, right? For example, Marx said that religion is the opium of the people. Nietzsche said that God okay, is dead. <coughs> and Freud said that certainly regarded believe in God as and nothing more than illusion, okay? That we, mature men, rational men and women should put aside, okay? We should not believe in God, according to Nietzsche, Freud and Marx. But again, as highlighted by Prof. Kamal, perhaps these scholars, all right, social scientists, they did not have the opportunity, they did not, okay, look at Islam, all right? They did not learn Islam, okay? So that's why, for them, religion is simply the same as Catholicism, okay? which is yeah, the corrupt capitalism, the corruptures that they face. Okay, So the spirit of scientism and the faith in it was no less actually religious in its intensity, okay? as highlighted by Prof. Kamal. And, she, and he quotes uh, Armstrong again, when Armstrong said that, Armstrong quotes uh, Freud. Okay, wait, I need to let these people in. Okay, me all. Okay, all right. So when Freud declared, no, all science is not an illusion, right? We can see here Freud was actually trying to generalize okay, himself, trying to generalize his science over us, okay, over everyone else throughout the world. And illusion, it would be to suppose that what science cannot give, we can get elsewhere, right? So if we believe that we can get progress from other source other than science, meaning to say we are simply facing an illusion, right? Do not don't believe in religion. Okay? So it is important to mention at this juncture that as Karen Armstrong points out, the European scholars and philosophers' rejection of God or religion was actually in respect of a particular notion of God and also a particular type of religion. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, Prof. Kamal is actually trying to say that the religion that they rejected was actually Catholic Church. Okay? And what's more, okay? <coughs> according to Prof. Kamal, Armstrong says the philosophers of the Enlightenment, actually, they did not reject the idea of God. However, right? what they rejected was actually the cruel God of the Orthodox Catholic who threatened mankind with eternal fire. 
Alright, they rejected mysterious doctrines, the vague doctrines about him that were abhorrent to reason. Okay, uh, as highlighted by Prof Kamal in the next slide. Okay, Armstrong herself says that. Okay, she quoted, for example, Voltaire and Spinoza, the two towering figure figures in the Western philosophy. Okay. Voltaire, actually, he did not reject God, right? Uh, Voltaire, in his philosophical dictionary, argued that faith in one God was actually much more rational and natural to humanity that believes in numerous deities, okay? Uh, so, yes, Voltaire believed in one God, but he actually despised those Catholic church, right? Similarly, Spinoza, okay, a Dutch Jew, came out with ideas which were very different from the mainstream Judaism, right? As he was also being influenced by scientific thinkers. Although many scholars regarded Spinoza as an atheist, he actually did have a belief in a God, okay, as highlighted by Armstrong, even though this was not the God of the Bible. Okay. So when Nietzsche declared that God was dead, because man had killed him, he was actually rejecting the notion of God as prevalent in European society and culture. Okay? <laughs> and therefore, in this subtopic, Prof. Kamal concluded by quoting Harvey Cox. All right? There's one Christian movement, sex, all right? the name is the death of God. Uh, this group of Christians, they had to actually follow okay, follow the pressure okay pressure given by all of these secular thinkers and therefore they also believe that okay, as how we call endorse the reality of secular city as though it was the will of god that man having matured or come of age okay meaning to say in terms of civilization should conduct all public matters without any reference to God. So we can see how powerful actually this, uh, yeah, secular movements, right? Even there's a sect of Indian Christianity that has to follow, okay, has to follow this kind of thinking, okay, line of thinking. For God is no longer present. Okay, that's the first subtopic. <coughs> any input? Any sharing or do you want me to continue with the next subtopic? By the way, I have shared the I attend. Do you get it that I attend? Maybe I need to share it again. It was where the chat button uh. ah yes for those who just came this is the I attend okay as I mentioned I'm explaining it again because this is the first time that the session is conducted in collaboration with Muhammad Kamal Hassan Library and Centris all right so I'm just recapping what I've explained in the last two sessions. Perhaps, inshallah, we can get more understanding. Forgive me if I cough regularly, right? <coughs> Very well. Okay. So, any input you want to share? Dr. Akram, perhaps Dr. Sohela. Okay, Dr. Carry on, please. We are listening. <laughs> okay, for joining. It is raining, right? Outside. Uh, I'm the only one in this Muhammad Malasan library. Okay, so we're going. If you don't have any input to share, maybe I can continue with the next subtopic. Okay. Where is the next subtopic?
Okay, this is the next topic. The title is Okay. So the next topic is entitled The Challenge to Circular Modernity and Development. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, for example, if perhaps, okay, mm, my explanation perhaps is not that uh, deep, okay, detail, all right, as I mentioned, I'm explaining it from the perspective, from my own understanding, okay, in particular from the perspective of political science, or in particular political philosophy, okay. So the challenge to circular modernity and development. So while natural science celebrated, so in this subtopic, Prof Kamal continue okay, to talk about these problems of secularism, all right, in relation to modernity and also development. So while natural science celebrated its achievements and successes independent of God or religion, yes, they celebrated, yes, they say that, yes, we managed to achieve progress because we reject God, okay? So the emerging social sciences in Europe and America saw religion generally as non-Western religions, all right? Okay. The emerging social sciences in Europe and America saw religion generally as non-Western religions, in particular as impediment to human progress, okay? So religion again, okay, they say it as, okay, we only impede us. Modernization in the Western conception was promoted, promoted as the path to the so-called third world countries had to follow, okay? So they again generalize. So meaning to say, the people in the third world country, the governments, right, also have to follow their framework, okay? <coughs> to Weber, Parsons, Lerner, Huntington, and many others, modernization necessitates rationalization and secularization or the diffusion, diffusion of secular norms. So we need to diffuse these secular norms, all right, promoted, uh, doing dakwah in their ways. Right. Uh, this is to be expected as both in Western Europe and the United States. The first half of the 20th century was perceived as a steady triumph of secularism. So many of their scholars okay, had taken the first half of the 20th century as okay, the triumph, the period, the golden age of secularism. Okay. So meaning to say, those people, Oriental people, okay, Afro-Asians, okay, religious leaders, nationalist leaders of, of okay, the Oriental world were simply downplayed, okay, belittled by the colonial powers and largely ignored by the Western scholars. They were characterized as fanatics or traditionalists. Okay? So those people who who believe in religion were simply uh, labeled as dogmatics, fanatics, or traditionalists, or fundamentalists, or meaning to say extremists, okay? <coughs> Western social scientists of the 50s and 60s were too preoccupied with prescribing secular modernization and economic development for the so-called underdeveloped or developing world to foresee the dramatic resurgence of Islam in the 70s, all right? So meaning to say they were very preoccupied, very busy with, uh, with promoting secularism, okay, in order to achieve modernism, all right? Uh, so they actually mislook that uh, we actually, in the Muslim world, as they are promoting that, we actually have our own resurgence, okay? The dramatic resurgence of Islam in the 70s or the rise of religious movements in different parts of the world. Okay, uh, so Prof Kamal he quoted a number of movements. Later we will see. So Prof Kamal he quoted another 
Dutch scholar by the name of Fred von der Mehden, modernization literature, particularly of the 50s and 60s, says the scholar, pictured a decline in religious value. So for him, any literatures, meaning to say research work related to modernism back then in the 50s and 60s, were simply focusing on secularism, all right? Pictured a decline. And what's more, they pictured a decline in religion, okay? Religious values, attitude, practices, etc. And legitimacy as modernization proceeded in its inevitable forward progress, according to Mahadan. Inevitable, okay? Forward progress. So actually, as mentioned by Prof. Kamal, we will see actually that was wrong, okay? Religion actually did not face a decline in our parts of the world. Its model of de development and expectations fit an evolutionary development model pattern after what was perceived to be the character of the predominantly circular West. Again, they are promoting their framework to us. Not promoting, trying to impose okay, uh, to, to the third world and of course to the Asians. So Prof Kamal, interestingly, he quoted Weber when Weber said that, okay, for him, popular religions of Asia, okay, are simply the world accommodation of Confucianism or the world rejection of Buddhism or the world conquest of Islam. So meaning to say he generalized our religion. He did not really study what kind of religion that we really believe in. So for him, for Weber, we simply believe okay, the Asian people, okay, if not Confucianism, world accommodation of yeah, Confucianism, talk about how we should deal with worldly matters. And or either we believe in okay, the world rejection of Buddhism, meaning to say yes, many people, okay, perhaps they simply generalize that Buddhism okay, talks about, uh, perhaps it is true, perhaps it is not, okay? Uh, world rejection, okay, meaning to say they do not believe in, do not care about worldly affairs. Or according to Weber, simply we were, we are the world conquest of Islam, all right? Uh, meaning to say Muslims, uh, of course, they want to conquer other people. Okay? Could not provide any path towards a rational, methodical control of life. So for Weber, these religions of the Asian people, Afro-Asian people, okay, are simply not rational, okay? Good uh, for us to deal with our daily life, okay? So the development, so-called development, okay? So Prof. Kamal put these inverted commas, okay? Meaning to say it is not really a development, okay? The development paradigm, okay, framework, theoretical framework adopted by the technologically developing countries in Africa, and Asia in the 60s and the 70s was, uh, to a large extent, a continuation of the Western economic formulation okay, for their former colonies. All right, meaning to say, according to Prof. Kamal, the Asian countries all right, uh, had been, especially during the 60s and 70s, okay, had been following this framework, okay, sadly. All right? Uh, in order, in the name of development, okay? <coughs> and this again, the paradigm calls for the containment or manipulation of religions by the, okay, the power, okay, the nation state for the sake of economic development and national integration, okay? Uh, so religions were manipulated by the people in power, okay, in order to, to subscribe to that framework, all right, which is not in line with us. In the Muslim world, this has led to the emergence, okay. Uh, this is when uh, Prof. Kamal mentioned that actually, okay, the Westerners, they was wrong, okay. Religion was not in decline, okay, in the Oriental world. In the Muslim world, this has led to the emergence of the holistic consciousness, all right, of Islam. So Muslims started to realize that that we should not follow that. And worldwide movements against secularism and secularization strategies of the Western world, okay? Uh, 
the Islamic struggle against secular modernization also, for example, all right, as I mentioned, Prof. Kamal, he quoted a number of movements, for example, the Iranian Revolution, 1979, Bloody conflicts in Algeria, 1990s, continued suppression of political Islamic movement in Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Tunisia, Turkey, and Indonesia under Sukarno's and Suharto's regimes. All right. Uh, so meaning to say, people started to realize that we need to, so to speak, Islamicize okay, our project. Okay, because we are actually facing a threat, this secularization threat. This aspect of contemporary Islam is being studied, analyzed, okay, sadly, and labeled by Western scholars under the name of fundamentalism. So those people who were trying to bring Islam, okay, to promote Islam, was okay, they were simply regarded again as the fundamentalists okay, or the extremists. Okay, that's it. All right, uh, that's the first two subtopics. As you can see, okay, even though we are only discussing two subtopics, but actually it is quite in depth, right? Okay, any sharing, any input you want to share with us? Actually, this tradition was informed to me by the Dean, okay, back then, Arwah Prof Kamal, he did this, right? Even though one week they discuss one page with Prof Azizan, okay? Uh, they will simply do it, all right? Uh, Alhamdulillah, today we discuss more than two subtopics. Okay. Okay. Anyone want to share something? Actually, <laughs> if I manage, I want to share with you the PDF okay of the book before I will scan, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. I didn't really have a time back then. Do you, anyone here has the book? No. I actually received the book as a present back then, all right, long time ago. And the cover page, not cover page. The pages had already turned yellow <laughs> because I simply put it there in my shelves. I didn't really read it, but who knows? Okay, today I have to read it. <laughs> okay, so if there's nothing, all right, uh, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I'm sorry for coughing regularly, all right, so inshallah. I will try to do this weekly, okay? if not bi-monthly. Right, thank you for your support again. Okay, have you all fill in that I attend because we've got star points and CTD points. Okay, so we end the session with Tasbih Tafara and Surah to us. Okay, thank you everyone.